All right, FAQ number 43, does the Bible teach a flat earth? Let's look about that. Turn first to Isaiah chapter 11. There's two references to this in the King James Bible, so we're going to look at both of them very quickly. Isaiah 11, verse 12. And we're going to see about this thing. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Okay, that's reference number one. Number two, you have Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. It says here, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So the atheistic fools come along and they say, see, the Bible says four corners of the earth. So that's like this piece of paper here. You put it flat. You'd have this corner, that corner, this corner, that corner. So it's a flat earth teaching. Uh, well, not so. You say, well, but the thing is, how could you have four corners of a round uh, earth, a sphere? Very simple. Here I have a ball. Okay, if you don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, now let's say this purple hemisphere here is south. This one's north. Okay, the orange, the fluorescent orange there. Now, is there a point in time when if you're here on the south pole and you start to travel north, is there a point in time when you're going to hit a certain area of this sphere and you no longer can go north? You start to actually go south? Mm -hmm. So there would be a perfect area of north on this sphere, right? There's a perfect area of south down here, but it doesn't end there. You see you have east and you have west right there. And you can travel, you can keep going this way, but eventually you're going to stop, you're going to stop going west. Eventually you're going to hit a certain point there where uh, you're going to start going east. Understand what I'm saying here? You go west to the, you get to the point of west there and then you're going to start to go east again. You go up, you're eventually going to hit north and you're going to start going south. So you can have a round sphere that has four corners. Okay? That's what compasses are. That's all about. Shows you what the four corners are. So these people that try to cut on the King James Bible and say that it's teaching a flat earth uh, just doesn't work. I'll show you another verse of scripture here. This one defines how the earth is shaped. Isaiah chapter 40. Just in case you have some little atheistic pinhead that's coming along trying to destroy your faith in the King James Bible. You can show them this. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22. For those people that say that, oh, it's a flat earth and things like this, it's just a flat, you know, square or rectangle. No, it doesn't work that way. And the Bible doesn't teach that. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. So right there it says circle. It's round. Okay, the Bible is very scientific. But uh, it's interesting because it goes on to tell you why a lot of people don't like the Bible. Because here's what God thinks of people. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretched, stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. All right? God looks down at this earth, and he looks down at all the scientists and all the great theologians and Richard Dawkins and, and uh, you know, all these other little atheistic fools. He looks down at them and just goes, like a little grasshopper, you know. And uh, they don't get saved. Time of Jacob's trouble, the Lord's going to go like that. Well, smash another grasshopper. Well, there's a bunch of them over there. I'll just smash those too. You say, that's a terrible, horrible thing. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. You reject that and you make fun of Jesus dying on the cross. Uh, what does God owe you? Okay. Another verse of scripture here real quickly. If you're still kind of saying, well, you know, I think that there's love there. Let me show you about the love. Psalm chapter 7, 
verse 11 through 13. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. You say, well, that's back in the Old Testament, though. God's not that way anymore. We, we serve the God of the New Testament. He's all love. The God of the New Testament is a God of love. Okay, Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Uh, people that reject Jesus Christ, they don't have God's love. Okay? You listen to my study on that. Does God love lost sinners? Okay? God's very angry with them, is the whole point. Uh, if you're not saved and you're watching this, you would do well to find out who your creator is and uh, get saved quickly because God's wrath is about ready to be poured out on this earth. Uh, there was only one other time in history was there a worldwide judgment of God's wrath, and that's the flood in the days of Noah. And we still see the signs of that today with things like the Grand Canyon. Uh, those layers were not laid up over millions and millions of years, and you got the river going through it, you know, and the Colorado River going through the Grand Canyon. It would have had to have flowed uphill for millions and millions of years till he wrote it down to where it's going through it now. Uh, that doesn't work. Um, and you also have the fossils. How do you have fossils? How do you get fossils? You know, unless they're buried very rapidly. You know, you have an animal fall down and die, it's not going to fossilize. Okay, they have to be buried in a massive flood. So yes, there are signs of uh, the flood everywhere. I mean, I've been in mountainous areas. I remember down in West Virginia, I have some family that lives down there, and there are mountains you know, 1,000, you know, 2,000 feet above sea level, and you go up there and there's fossilized uh, clamshells and seashells everywhere. You know, how are they getting there? Well, there was a worldwide flood, and uh, it only lasted for 40 days and 40 nights, by the way. Uh, the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming, God's wrath, his next worldwide judgment is going to be for seven years. Uh, I'm glad I'm not going to be here. I would suggest that you get saved so that you can get out of that as well.